Former sub poster is just central to the ITV drama Mr Bates versus the Post Office will give evidence in front of MPs today as bosses from the Post Office and Fujitsu face questions about what they knew. Well, Joe Hamilton was accused of stealing £36,000 and feared jail, so pleaded guilty to false accounting in 2008 and sentenced to a community order. Turned out the original theft accusation was a made-up charge and her conviction was quashed more than a decade later. Joe's story, along with several others, captured the attention of Computer Weekly journalist Rebecca Thompson, who first broke the story brilliantly 15 years ago after a six-month investigation. And they both join us now. When you think back to 2008 and the terrible day when um, the court case was happening, could you imagine that um, 15 yeah. years on you would be um, portrayed in a national television programme, you'd be giving evidence to a select committee, you'd be appearing on Good Morning Britain. <laughs> I guess back then that would have just felt impossible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on the day I got sentenced, not, it was wonderful to have all the village with me. Mm -hmm. But um, I still believed that I was the only one it had happened to, you know. Um, and it wasn't till it went in the papers the next day that I was a fraudster and the village had got behind me that I got phone calls then. From then on was the beginning of the fight back, really, when I realised I wasn't alone and there were quite a lot of other people out there. Oh, so shocking, honestly. Even to talking to you now, having watched the drama, having looked at all the documentaries and read all of the... It's still so shocking that it happened. Joe, you were originally told that you had stolen this money. Yeah. That's what the post yeah. office accused you of. And you sort of struck a deal, didn't you, saying, OK, I'll put my hands up to false accounting in order to get out of jail for theft. But you hadn't stolen the money. No, they only ever charged me with theft in the first place. And we got right to trial and they said, well, we're, we're, if we... Um, we'll drop the theft if you plead guilty to false accounting. And I always thought I'd kind of... was a bit guilty of false accounting. Well, because you tried to yeah. make up the gap in the accounts, yeah. you were forced... I'd run out of money. <laughs> you'd, you were forced into yeah, it, yeah, weren't you? Yeah. Do you believe that that theft charge was something that they ever thought would stick or that they used that as leverage to get you to plead to, guilty to something else? Yeah, definitely they, they used it as leverage because my legal file came out that said there was no evidence of theft. So, I mean... I'm not a lawyer, but if someone brings that to you and said there's no evidence of theft, why would you pursue a theft charge? And they knew that at the time. Yeah. They wrote down at the time yep. there was no evidence, but yep. they were still threatening you with that. Yeah, well, that was in 2006. The doc, the doc, well, subsequently we found that the documents dated um, just after they sacked me in 2006. They knew there was no evidence. I mean, that feels like a crime. Yep. That, yep. Not a crime you committed. No. But a crime that was committed against you. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you want to see held responsible for that? Well, we'll go through the inquiry and find out exactly who knew, who knew what, when, and, yes, criminal charges should be brought. If people have committed crimes, they should be punished, just like we were punished for not committing crimes. Oh, honestly, I find it absolutely <laughs> sickening. And, Rebecca, you were at Computer Weekly um, the year after Joe was, was charged, in 2009... Mm -hmm. You wrote about this. Jo was one of your first case studies. She was, yeah. You must sit there scratching your head <laughs> about the fact that 15 years later, it is finally in front of a public inquiry. Were you um, shouting from the rooftops at the time and, and wondering why this wasn't being taken up by MPs, by the government? Yes, I mean, some MPs were, obviously, um, James Arbuthnot was involved right from the start. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I sort of found it confusing why more people weren't listening to the stories that postmasters were telling because to me they were really compelling. Um, they were sort of coherent, they had loads of evidence. Um, yeah, it was baffling. It probably didn't help that when you asked the post office, they went into full denial mode. They did, yeah, they, they just lied. So in your story, you write, the post office denies it received any complaints from postmasters and also denies that any IT-related fault could have caused the systems to show incorrect sums of money owed by some postmasters. A spokesman said, you might want to cover your ears, Joe. <laughs> Horizon is an extremely robust system which operates over our entire post office network and successfully records millions of transactions each day. 
There is no evidence that points to any fault with the technology. We would always look into and investigate any issues mm. raised by sub postmasters. I mean, how many lies are in that statement? Yeah, yeah, a lot. And I think that in the same article, even back then, an IT expert was saying, no, IT system is infallible. Every, every IT system has glitches. This is a year after Amazing. what happened to you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. What do you think when you listen to that? <laughs> well, I've listened to that same statement quite a number of times. <laughs> yes. Because it seems to be like the party line is just shoved out every time, um, you know. Um... Can, can I ask you, Rebecca, though, because, you know, as a journalist back then, regularly you'd have been ringing up press officers in the post office or in Fujitsu, and they're reading out this line. But the press officer isn't lying. They're reading out the thing they've been told to say. Mm -hmm. The question for the inquiry and for the select committee is where was the lie formulated? Who decided, not the press officer reading out the line, who decided we're going to cover this up? Mm -hmm. Was it um, the most senior person... In the, the, in the post office, or were they being lied to? Was there a senior person at Fujitsu who knew and was lying? Where do you think the actual culpability for the lie should be, should be pinpointed? And is that person, those people, are they going to be held to account in the inquiry and in the select committee? Have they found the right people yet? Um, I'm sure they will be held to account um, via the inquiry, um, but I think... Do you the, know who they are, though? No, nobody knows who they are. And the culpability is at an institutional level. It's, I feel uncomfortable with individuals being singled out at this stage. But somebody must have decided we're going to cover this up. I don't really know if that is the case. I think it started um, in the late 90s when Tony Blair was under pressure from the Japanese government. And I think it kind of snowballed. It was almost... Um, a layer upon layer of things happening. And I'm not really sure that you can boil it down to one person. And I think lessons need to be learned at that higher level, at the institutional level, to stop this happening again. Because, it, yeah, obviously, people have questions to answer. People um, will be culpable on an individual level, but lessons really need to be learned at the higher level. But Fujitsu knew that they had um, the power to intervene in Joe's terminal, but they told people, including the post office, they didn't. So somebody decided... Or well, somebody knew that was a lie. So that is an individual. Shouldn't we find who that person is? Yeah, and um, the inquiry will, yeah. I think. Well, yeah, yeah. Yes, because Fujitsu and the post office didn't have um, any caution, did they, about drilling down into one person, in your case, yeah. Joe, or, Not at all. you know, in the case of Lee Castleton or all yeah. the other hundreds of individuals yeah. <laughs> who are held to, to account. I suspect you might not be quite as forgiving as, as Rebecca might be about holding individuals to account. Well, I think the, the inquiry will, will yeah. get there. Um, mm. You know, it's a journey, and I think it starts today, the Fujitsu evidence. And, yeah. and, uh... So the Fujitsu individual is going to be in front of the inquiry, and the inquiry itself, the public inquiry, led by a judge, has been very robust, and we, yeah. we can say that. You're going to be appearing, aren't you, yeah. in front of MPs on the Select Committee. Yeah. What do you expect that experience is going to be like? Because the chief executive of the post office will be there today as well. And also the director of Fujitsu Europe will be there. What, I mean, that's going to be quite a dramatic day today, isn't it, yeah. for you? Well, we just want them to pay the group that yes. took the action in the first place. Everyone's battle weary. It's gone on for decades now. Just pay the group because they've had almost nothing. And I think that is shameful. And this is the group which is at the heart of the yeah, TV drama. Alan's group. Alan's group. Alan Bates will also be giving evidence yeah. today. But he'll be on Zoom. I know. Of course. He's run away from the media. Well, but, but, <laughs> I, I mean, he's not run away from giving evidence, has no. he? But I expect, as, as Ed focused. was saying... He's focused. Yeah, as Ed was yeah. saying, sometimes he doesn't come in person because no. perhaps he doesn't want to be no. the centre of the limelight. No, he, he's never wanted that. He's just wanted justice for all of us and uh yeah i mean he's he's my hero obviously but he we just need the group paying because they literally are i think the oldest one was in the paper the other day at 91 you know for goodness sake how much longer if they can if they can make a statement and say anyone can come forward without paperwork if you've got a criminal conviction we will get it fast tracked overturned and you have access to 600,000 why can't they pay the group you know, for goodness sake, none of this would be happening without them in the first place. But you're a hero too, because you're sitting here. You're the person who's stepping up. The thing is, 
Um, this is now not just about you, is it? You are now doing this on behalf it's of others. It's about everybody. It's not about me. It's about us as a group. We fought and we've won, but we're still waiting. I mean, I'm lucky I was criminalised, so I had access to criminal compensation. But the group, you know, there's, there's 500 odd of them and they're just dragging their feet. They're paying lawyers more not to pay us than they're actually paying us, which is just mad. Why don't they just have a look? If the claim's reasonable, just pay it. You know, don't pay someone to take 5p off here and there pay them hundreds of pounds an hour to do that. It, it, it's just nonsense. I wonder, Rebecca, how much money would have been saved oh. if back in 2009 they'd just, <laughs> just paid... Listen to us. They'd listened to you <laughs> at Computer <laughs> Weekly, said, we hold our hands up, we're going to replace the money instantly and, you know, we'll put it all right. Hundreds because... of millions, yeah. Hundreds, <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, a while I've been looking but hundreds of millions, yeah. Exactly right. And, and Joe, the irony and the sickening irony of hearing someone like you say, I was the lucky one because yeah. I was criminalised. Yeah. And that meant I had access to criminal compensation. compensation. You know, shouldn't be, should it? Just pay the group, you know, just make a decision. If the claim's reasonable, pay it. We don't need lawyers to tell us, or you've claimed for something you're not entitled to, you know, for God's sake, just pay us. We were hearing from mm -hmm. Jess Core yesterday. Yeah. She said that a week on from the Prime Minister's announcement, she still hasn't had any contact with anybody about what's going to happen. Yeah. And you think to yourself, have these people learned no. nothing? They've what not learned they anything, you know. I think they're in their own little shell and um, we just have to keep throwing rocks at them until the shell breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way of putting it. Sure. And that's what you're going to be doing today in front of yeah. MPs. Thank you yeah. so much, and Rebecca. You know, congratulations on doing the work originally back in 2009. Mm. Thank goodness. Finally, 15 years later. It's so possible to get Scoop of the Year, even if it's 15 years delayed. Yes, <laughs> yes. All the awards. <laughs> Thank you both.